Okay, we're going to try going through some of the calculator multiple choice questions. And what I'm going to do is go through the calculator multiple choice questions that don't require a calculator. Uh, first question we see is going to be question number 77. Um, they're asking us, they have three regions, A, B, and C, and they tell us that each of the region has an area of two. Um, so this is two, this is two, and this is two. They say that we're looking for the value from negative three to positive three of f of x, which is this curve, plus one. So when we integrate, we have to know that this is going to be the area under the curve of f of x. So when we take a look at that, that's going to be two, and it's below the curve, so it's a negative two, plus two, which is b, minus, or plus a negative two, which is c, because it's below. So that's what we have so far. And then plus, that's this integrated. When we integrate 1, we get x. But that x has to also be evaluated from negative 3 to positive 3. All right, so this is going to be when, when, I, when all said and done, a negative 2 plus. And now I'm going to plug in. I plug in a positive 3 first, x to the positive 3. And then minus what I get when I plug in the negative 3. So these will cancel. I'm left with a negative 2 plus 6, which is 4. Choice. C. Okay, very easy question without a calculator. Number 78, here's your related rates question. Um, they say the radius of circles increasing at a constant rate. So if the radius is increasing, that's dr dt, and that's going to be at 0.2 meters per second. What is the rate of increase of the area? So da dt, the area of the circle, that's what we're looking for. Uh, at the instant when the circumference of the circle, circumference of the circle is given to us at 20 pi. All right, so since we're looking for dA dt, we have to come up with the formula for the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, and then we need to take the related rates um, derivative of that, so the time derivative. So the derivative of a is dA dt, and that's going to equal, now the derivative of pi r squared is going to be 2 pi r dr dt. Okay. So if you take a look at all the things we need, according to this, uh, we need a dA dt, we need an r, and we need a dr dt. We know what dr dt is. dr dt, it says um, the radius is increasing, so that's a positive 0.2. So we know that. dA dt is what we're looking for, and we have to just figure out what r is. And the way we're going to figure out what r is, is we're going to use this fact. The formula for circumference in terms of the diameter is simply pi d. But if we write that in terms of the radius, it's 2 pi r. And we know it's equal to 20. So I know that 2 pi r has to equal 20 pi. Since the pi's are on both sides, they're going to cancel. So 2 times r has to equal 20, so r has to be 10. And now we're ready to plug in. So we have our dA dt, which is what we're looking for, is going to equal 2 pi r, r we said was 10, times 0.2. All right, when we do this, uh, 2 times 0.2 is 0.4 times 10. This is just simply 4 pi. Choice C. Question 79, again, doesn't really require a calculator. You have three graphs. It says, um, for which of the following does the limit as x approach 4 exist? That means as you're approaching 4 from the left side and the right side, you're going to squeeze and approach the same number in the, uh, on the y-axis. When you look at um, number 1 here, or letter i, you are coming in to 4. So we're approaching this number over here. When you're coming into 4 here, you're approaching the same number so the limit in number one, even though it's an open circle, the limit's going to exist because it's as you approach it. So this one's good. So right away I'm going to go down to the choices. Especially, and whenever you have one of these and you have these as the choices, you've got to cross out once you know something. So we know one is true, so A can still be an answer. B can't be an answer anymore. C can't be an answer anymore. So it's either going to be A, D, or E. At least we're eliminating choices. In question number, or in double I, same thing. As we approach 4 this way, and as we approach 4 this way, 
we're going to be approaching that same number in the y-axis. So this is also good. And since that's true, it can't be 1 only, and it can't be 1 and 3 only, so it has to be d. And let me explain 3 and why 3 doesn't work. As we approach 4 from this direction, look what the graph's doing. It's approaching this number here. But as we approach 4 from the right, from the smaller side, from the left-hand side, it's approaching this number here. And obviously those two values are not going to be the same. All right, so that's why choice D is that answer. Moving along again, you can see not a very hard question, doesn't need a calculator. And you'll notice that on these questions that some are calculators, some aren't. Um, this one goes back to the in intermediate value theorem. If you take f of negative 2, and you know you can see it if I just draw a quick graph. If this is negative 2, f of negative 2 is a negative 5. That means we're someplace down here. And then f of 1 is going to be a positive 4. So that means we're someplace up here. All right. Uh, if f is continuous, which means I'm, I'm going to be able to make this curve without really picking up my pen, and there's no, nothing crazy happening between these two points, and we know that these two facts are true, which statement must also, which statement, which of the following statements could be false? So I know when I connect these, I'm going to get a zero that's definitely here. So I know that um, A is going to be true.